Okay, so welcome back. In this, in the last video, we discussed how um, how if you've got a sequence of sequences in the LP metric space, then what and they converge to some limit sequence L, then uh, the all of these term-wise sequences are going to be convergent, and in fact they're going to converge uh, to uh, the uh, their corresponding term in the limit sequence. So the uh, the first term-wise sequence is going to converge uh, to the uh, first term of the limit sequence. The second term-wise sequence is going to converge to the second term in the limit sequence, etc. Okay, so let's prove that now. So, if this is convergent, what does that mean? Uh, that means, just writing out the definition of convergence, and where should I write it? I'll write it down, uh, I'll write it here. So, if if this sequence converges to L, that means that there exists some natural number, which is uh, some big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between, uh, let's say, x little n, the, se the nth sequence, and the limiting se limit sequence, uh, is less than epsilon, and you can do that for all epsilon. So for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists some natural number uh, such that if you take any little uh, n greater than or equal to big M, obviously little n needs to be a natural number too, uh, then the sequence the distance between that nth sequence and the limit L is less than epsilon. So, okay, you give me any epsilon, I can find you some sequence x big N, such that if you choose any sequence x little n, which is beyond or equal to that sequence x uh, big N in the sequence of sequences, uh, then its distance from L will be less than epsilon. So let's just write out the, the what these sequences are just a few terms of these sequences. So you've got a sequence here, x big N, which is x big N1, so the first term of the big N sequence, xn2, xn3, etc. So there are a few terms of that nth sequence. And x little n is again another sequence. So x little n1, the first term of the little nth sequence, x little n2, x little n3, etc. So that is the third term of the little nth sequence. So basically, Whatever epsilon you give me, I should be able to find you some big N uh, such that if you go to that point in the sequence and take any po other point in the sequence of sequences that's beyond that point and ask what is the distance of that point from the limit sequence L, it should be less than epsilon. Okay, so now what we just need to do is fill in what is the distance between this sequence x little n and l, and the sequence limit sequence l. Well, uh, just by the definition of uh, the distance function on um, on um, the l p metric space, it is this. Uh, so get rid of that plus because it just makes things more complicated. There's a minus there. Okay, so it's going to be equal to. So this thing here is going to be equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of each one of these terms. So basically what I need to do is take this term here, subtract off this term. So x big n, uh, sorry, x little n, I, that should be, I do apologize, it's this sequence here. x little n i minus l i. So basically what I do is I go along each one of these here. So I go to the first term of this uh, x little n sequence and this first term of the limit sequence, take the modulus of their difference, raise that to the power of p, and then I do the same for all of the other terms. So I do it for the second term, the third term, the fourth term. I take the modulus, raise it to the power of p, and I add them all up and take the limit of that sequence. And basically if x little n, uh, sorry, x little n and l are both elements of LP, which they are assumed to be, then this is going to be something, uh, some finite value, basically, this limit. And then I take that to the power of 1 over p, well, basically, I am assured that that is going to be less than epsilon. Okay? Right. So, uh, how do I then prove from that that the term-wise sequence uh, sequences are all convergent. Well, uh, to prove the term-wise sequences are convergent, what I need to prove is that there is a point in each of these term-wise sequences. So I need to prove that there is, uh, if you give me an epsilon, so uh, let me get another piece of paper and we'll proceed. Okay. So if I want to prove, uh, if I want to prove uh, that the term-wise sequences are convergent from that, what do I need to prove? I need to prove that uh, for all, let's say, um, for all 
uh, I'm going to use the letter delta. For all delta greater than zero, there needs to exist some big M, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little m is greater than or equal to big M, uh, it implies that the distance, and now we're talking about the distance in real or complex numbers, because these term-wise sequences aren't, sequence of se aren't sequences of sequences now. They are sequences of real or complex numbers. So the distance in either the real or complex numbers uh, between the, um, the, between the um, nth term and the, uh, and the limit, basically, uh, is going to be, uh, well, we need to prove that the uh, distance between the nth term and the limit, which is the uh, L, uh, the corresponding term in the, the limit. So let's say we need to pick, basically. We're going to pick an arbitrary term-wise sequence. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we want to prove that the ith term-wise sequence, so let's write it out, x1i, the ith term of the x, uh, uh, of the first sequence, x2i, the i-th term of the second sequence, here is x big ni, the i-th term of the big n sequence, x little ni, etc., and then we've got li, the i-th term of the limited sequence, we want to prove that this arbitrary term-wise sequence converges, uh, whether it be real or complex numbers. Remember, it's a sequence now of real or complex numbers. This is our sequence. Right, so if we want to prove that converges, we need to prove that there exists some big M, so where can I write this? So let's put it maybe here. It could be, of course, above big M, uh, but we need to prove that there is some big M, which is a natural number, such that if you go to that point here in this sequence and take any term of that sequence beyond there in the point, it, sorry, beyond that point, uh, then its distance from this limit here, this li, is going to be less than ep or less than delta in this case. So x uh, little m i, so the I'm nth term of uh, this uh, sequence, of this i term y sequence, uh, and the limit of this i uh, of this i term y sequence is going to be less than delta. Okay, uh, so. Um, in the real or complex numbers, though, the distance is just going to be the modulus function, the complex modulus function. X M I minus L I needs to be less than delta. And that works for whether they are real or complex numbers, because if we just view this as the complex modulus function, then the complex modulus function restricted to the real numbers is just the absolute value function. Okay, right. Uh, so what we uh, what we need to do is find some big M basically. You give me a delta, I need to be able to find you a big M. Well, my claim is that if I let uh, if I go back to this what I know here, which is that uh, this uh, sequence of sequences converges in the DP metric, I this is true here. Given any epsilon, I can find you a big N here, this line here, this X big N, such that if you go beyond that, uh, if you choose any little n greater than or equal to big N, this is true. I claim that what I can do, basically, is let epsilon equal delta. So you give me a delta and you're asking me to do this. I am going to go back to what I know, which is this up here, and I'm going to say, okay, you know that epsilon which was originally general, I'm going to now say that I want it to equal delta. Okay, so that means that I can find some x big N such that um, this here, such that if you take any little m greater than or equal to big N, the uh, distance between the x little nth sequence and the limit sequence is going to be less than delta, which implies that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of x n i minus l i to the power of p over 1 to the power of 1 over p is going to be less than delta. And that's true for all little n greater than or equal to this big N. My claim is let big N equal big N, basically. So I've got this big N from here now. So I've Put in my epsilon equal to delta, that spits me out a big N. I'm going to say, let my big M equal my big N. So my claim is that I can use this point here in the sequence, basically. I can take any point beyond there in the sequence, any x little n i, basically. So I can take uh, x little n i, subtract that from l i, take the modulus of that, and my claim is that that's going to be less than delta for all little n is greater than or equal to big N, which is now what I'm using as big M, okay? 
So my claim is that all terms beyond that term in the sequence, in this term-wise sequence, are going to be a distance from the limit, from their corresponding term in the limit sequence, less than delta. Okay, why? Because uh, what I know is that this whole sum here, I know that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of x ni minus li to the power of p or to the power of 1 over p. I know that that is going to be less than delta, okay? Uh, so now what I do is I say, right, uh, uh, take the 1 over p to the opposite side and you get that, uh, so let me just bring this up a bit, uh, so you get that the um, sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of x n i minus l i to the power of p is going to be less than delta to the power of p. So I've just moved that 1 over p to the opposite side, raised both sides to the power of p, if you like. Okay, and now uh, this great big sum, basically, uh, is, going to, um, is going to be greater than, greater than or equal to, so uh, this great big sum is going to be greater than or equal to x n i minus l i, and I do apologize that the i here is a dummy variable, and the i here is our actual uh, choice of term-wise sequence. Let me just replace this dummy variable here. Uh, let's replace that with an r, because it's just a dummy variable, okay? So, right, I do apologize for that. So, now I'm saying, okay, we take this specific term of this sequence, we take the ith term of this uh, sequence x n and the ith term of the sequence l, and we're asking what's the distance between them. So basically, what I'm asking is what's the distance between them? I know that that is going to be less than or equal to the sum of all of these, uh, oh sorry, that to the power of p is going to be less than or equal to. Right, so basically, this sum here, that says, go along all this xn sequence, here's the x sequence, x little n, here's the sequence l. That sum says, go along all of these terms, take the modulus of the distance between them, raise that to the power of p, and then do that for every single term and add them all up. That's what that sum says there. Okay, I'm saying that if you just do that for the ith term, you take the distance, the modulus of the, dis of the difference between the x n i and the l i, just do it for the ith term and raise that to the power of p. That's got to be less than or equal to this. It's going to be equal to it when all of the others are just zero. So the distance between this and uh, the modulus of the difference between this one and this one is equal to zero. The modulus of the difference between this one and this one is going to equal zero, etc. For all of them other than this ith term. Uh, all the other times when you've got the remotest one that is, uh, is uh, non-zero, this is going to be greater than that. And the reason is that you're summing up a bunch of positive things because the modulus turns them all positive and raising them to the power of p does not make them go negative. Okay, uh, so that is true and therefore by transitivity it implies that the modulus of x n i minus l i to the power of p is going to be less than delta to the power of p which implies taking 1 over p of both sides xni minus li is less than delta. And that was true for all little n greater than or equal to big N. So basically, if you converge in L infinity, uh, sorry, LP, then it implies that each of your term-wise sequences converge, and they converge to the same number as it, they, sorry, they converge to their corresponding number in the limiting sequence, so uh, limit sequence. So all of the term-wise sequences do converge, and they converge to their corresponding number in the uh, limit sequence. Okay, so in the next video, what we'll see is that the other way round does not hold, i.e. Uh, if you've got a sequence of sequences where all of the term-wise limits exist, it does not necessarily imply that that sequence of sequences uh, converges in L, L, and LP, rather. Even if all of the sequences in the sequence of sequences are elements of LP, and of course, uh, we'd be, we're only going to uh, consider sequences of that form.